Good afternoon, everyone. Um, today, I am going to be doing the first episode of Let's Play Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri. Uh, this is actually my third recording due to many audio issues. Um, I think I know how I'm going to handle these audio issues. I really hope that didn't screw up. Oh, well. Um, so I'm actually going to have to disable many of the sound effects as a result of this, because what's happening is that the microphone is picking up from the speakers. Normally that doesn't happen. Normally the software that I use for recording this is actually capable of filtering out which what's coming from where. Unfortunately with the VM that I'm running, it can't uh, there's an extra delay being caused by the VM that it can't handle. Yeah, my microphone is picking up all sorts of noises that I don't want it to. Um So, yeah. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go ahead and mute my own sound temporarily. Unfortunately, that means that I don't know when voiceovers are finished. Uh, so when it comes to voiceovers, I'm going to mute my microphone and then unmute my own sound so I can actually hear what in the world they're saying. So, today I am going to be starting off my Let's Play. Oh, I forgot. It's tradition. I must continue with tradition and bring a cat in into the camera in some manner. The last recordings Isin was actually chirping behind me, and you can see over there. Anyway, um, so, there was a bit of a contest, not really a contest, but I asked many of you what I should play as for my first Let's Play. Um, there are 14 factions total in Alpha Centauri plus Alien Crossfire. I was primarily looking at the original seven, because they're the more flavortastic factions. Um, there was no consensus for the people that gave me feedback, mostly because only two people gave me feedback. So I went with the person that selected first. Unfortunately, it's the human hive. Um, so, first off, I'm going to create a map of the world, and then I'll explain my problems with the hive. So, I always end up choosing a custom random map. I could just do a regular random map, but they end up really small. I prefer a huge planet size. Huge planet sizes mean that I'm not necessarily directly next to an AI. My early game is probably the weakest part of my game, unless I'm playing as somebody like Miriam or Sparta or um, the Cult of Planet. Those are very strong races right in the beginning. Races. Strong civilizations right in the beginning. Factions. There we go. Now I'm using smack terms. I'm about two years rusty on this right now, so hopefully this won't be too terrible. Um, so anyway, a huge planet is 64 tiles by 128 tiles. It's corresponds with a normal size map for Civ 4 and Civ... No, I think Civ 5 went small again. So yeah, I think it's a normal size map for Civ 4. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and choose average for pretty much everything else, so ocean coverage of 30 to 50... or 50 to 70 percent of the planet, that's about that of Earth. Um, average erosive forces, so erosive forces control the rockiness of the terrain. The more rockiness, the more minerals you get, but the worse it is for farming. Um, native life forms. So, usually in the game, um, you have mind worms, you have spore launchers, you have isles of the deep, you have sea lurks, and you have locus of Chiron. These are all native life forms that could attack you and probably will attack you. You have three options here. You can either go with the normal number, which is still a great deal, especially on transcend. You can go with rare which means that there's 50% fewer of them, but at the same time you get a 25% penalty to your end score. Or you can go with Abundant, where you have 50% more of them, and a 25% bonus to your end score. Um, I go with Abundant Life Forms out of habit, mostly because I played tree hooking for a very long time, so I'm pretty good with Abundant Life Forms. I'm not going to be playing tree hooking, I'm still going to go Abundant. Um, cloud Cover, this shows how much rain that you have. You're more likely to get arid areas with the less cloud cover you have. That was my problem the last game, so I'm going to go ahead and go with dense cloud cover. Last game was way too many arid areas. I'm playing on transcend difficulty, which is the highest difficulty. Don't. And so, the game rules. Um, these are the game rules that I end up using. Um... Allowing all the victory methods, I'm allowing players to be restarted, I'm allowing players to choose their starting location, and we're not going to see what the world map looks like immediately, which is good. 
the only one of these that I absolutely, well, only ones I should say that I absolutely refuse to play with are blind research because it just drives me completely and utterly insane to not know what I'm researching, and Iron Man. Uh, Iron Man is actually the only one of these that gives you a bonus for points at the end. Unfortunately, Smack is not the most stable game in the world. Um, for the release version of Alpha Centauri, simple things like planes intercepting each other would cause the game to crash. Um, a volcano erupting, and it happened to erupt on top of one of your units, would cause the game to crash, and there's absolutely no way you can avoid that. On top of it, I'm playing at a funny resolution with a somewhat hacked up version of Smack, so I'm going to assume that the game will crash a few times. So, um, we're going to be playing as the Human Hive today. Um, the Human Hive has several features. Um, so, the Human Hive is led by Shinji Yang which I will be playing as Chinji Yang. I like keeping default names. Uh, Yang comes from China. He wants an atheist police state. He doesn't really want an atheist police state. They misinterpreted his goals. He wants a philosophically sound location. It's kind of hard to describe. Um, Yang has several features, or his faction has several features. One, he starts with the tech doctrine loyalty. He also starts with the bonuses of plus one growth and plus one industry and uh, perimeter defense in every base, which adds the defense for your bases, which is not all that useful for me. And he also starts with another feature, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, he starts with a penalty of minus two economy and is unable to use democracy, which is a problem. I like my democracy. I'm going to shut up for a moment and let the quote play. Why are you not muting? Microphone, what are you doing? Learn to overcome the crass demands of flesh and bone, for they warp the matrix through which we perceive the world. Extend your awareness outward, beyond the self of body, to embrace the self of group and the self of humanity. The goals of the group and the greater race are transcendent, and to embrace them is to achieve enlightenment. Chairman Shen Jiang, SS on Mind and Matter. So, um, Yang is very philosophical in most of his quotes. It's also kind of creepy. Oh, so the one thing I wanted to show you all, uh, let's open this up and open up the hive. Um, they actually forgot to edit this into the little description. I've thought about editing the file for his description in order to actually show it right. So this is the actual faction file for the human hive. Um, this is exactly what the game reads. The game actually uses a very large number of text files to run pretty much everything. Um, one of the things that they forget to mention, so here's Doctrine Loyalty, here's the free um, perimeter defense, Here's plus one growth, here's plus one industry, here's minus two economy, and here is immunity to efficiency penalties. Um, so Yang, the hive can run any choice that would normally give an efficiency penalty without actually suffering the penalty. It's a great advantage, it's pretty much their only huge advantage over anybody else. Um, it's pretty much the only way Yang is even playable. And if I remember right, that was actually a patch. It was originally robust, which is half the penalties. Um, new era, uh, new era of struggle and opportunity awaits you. Yeah, you can read that if you want. You now shape the destiny of your high faction, which has just made Planetfall. All right, this is already a vastly better start compared to the previous one. Um, for one, I don't see a whole bunch of arid tiles everywhere where I'm starting. I'm coastal. Coastal is nice. I'm on top of a river. Rivers are nice. Uh, there's a couple of fungus near me, which is not that great. I see some rocky spots, some hilly spots. So, to give you all an idea, these are rolling spots. You can tell there's a few spots on them. These are rocky. There's a lot of them. This is xenofungus. Xenofungus is the fungus among us. Native life forms tend to lurk there, and at least at the start of the game, you really can't produce any hunting player. They're just kind of deadly. It also takes multiple tries to even enter the square. It's 
you really don't want to mess with Xenofungus in the beginning of the game. You probably want to convert it to something useful. So I'm going to go ahead and make my first city here. This is actually not that terrible of a spot. Oops. I must still have scrolling enabled. That's not right. So um, this is the city screen. The city screen shows us we have 19 turns until our city grows. Um, we have a scout patrol that's actually overbuilt. It's because we have a bonus to industry. Bonuses to industry. A plus one bonus to industry reduces all mineral costs by 10%. So normally this would end up costing nine min or 10 minerals. That doesn't make any sense. This is actually a bonus to minerals. Anyway, um... Yeah, um, we're overpaying for the scout patrol that we start with. We need some scout patrols, trust me. And we also have a second colony pod, which I'm going to have it move around first off. I'm going to go ahead and change some of the preferences, because obviously... Oh, it says mouse at edge, scrolls view. It's disabled. Why was it... And now it's not doing it. Oh well, um, I'm going to go ahead and move my colony pod around. Complete. We're going to need colony pods. So I'm going to quickly go over some of the settings that I have that are not default settings. So, oh, by the way, you can sort of see how these seem to have hills and valleys. This is our only guess as to terrain. So we can move around a bit, uh, sort of see that yeah, there's a ridge there. It's probably the fullest ridge. Um, some hilly terrain over here, so it's almost certainly not water. This is probably water. The ridge of some type. Some more ridges. A whole bunch of water. Really weird hilly terrain. That is almost certainly the sunny mesa. Um, basically, this just gives you a very brief geologic landscape, but you don't actually know what's over there. But yeah. Um, also. already showed you that. So these are our social engineering choices at the moment. The doctrine loyalty allows us to have the police state social choice. Um, we actually can't afford the upheaval cost for it right now. So right now we are in frontier politics, simple economics, survival values, and uh, we have no future society. Um, the bonuses that we get, we have minus one energy in each base. This is pretty annoying. Not for the reason that you would think. So minus one energy for each base is not really that much. Yes, it's going to hurt if you have a lot of bases, but it doesn't hurt that much. Uh, minus three economy is actually minus one energy per square, if I remember right. That's a lot nastier. The real problem with the minus two economy is the fact that increasing your economy doesn't help that much. So minus one economy is minus one energy in your headquarters, which whoop de doo it's not really that big of a deal. Zero economy is normal. Uh, plus one economy is plus one energy in each base. Plus two economy is plus one energy in each square. You can't reach plus two economy like this. I believe it's possible toward the end of the game to get plus two economy from Hive, but that's pushing it. Um, I also have a plus 10% growth rate, so I grow cities a little bit faster. If you somehow reach a four, no, I believe it's a five growth rate. Um, that's, oh, I forgot to make this look pretty. There we go. Stupid black boxes. Um, if you somehow reach a plus five growth rate, that's a permanent population boom. What that means is that your cities will grow every turn as long as you have food and habitation facilities available. Um, hab limits are, you have to build a building in order to go beyond a certain population. The first hab limit is seven. The hive does not alter the hab limit one way or the other, so we can go up to a seven population without worrying about hab. We're probably going to be revolting well before then. Um, minimum costs are decreased by 10%, and that's it. If I were to go with a police state, I would have extra free units per base. So right now I can support two units without having to pay any resources per base. Um, once I go with a police state, I'll be able to support four. Police state like to support their military. They also like their police. Uh, normally I can have one military unit as police. What that means is that as long as I have a unit with an attack power stationed in a city, it reduces my unhappiness, or drone rate, by one. With three, 
or with a police rating of two, that means I can have three military units as police. So I can reduce it by three. That's it. That's all the difference. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop this here. This is a good stopping point after the end of the first turn. Um, I hope this wasn't incredibly boring. I'm probably going to go ahead and record the next one now.